Yeah, I, I started in the translation industry in 2006 as, you know, project manager for a small translation company. Um, and over, you know, and it was an industry I have not heard anything about back then. It was all new to me. And I think like most people who enter the localization industry, I had no idea such industry even existed. And even back then in 2006, it was even less known than it is now. Um, and I immediately fell in love with the industry <laughs> and I stayed. And over the years, you know, I worked for some wonderful companies and different roles, but I always enjoyed the aspect, you know, even in the different roles, the aspect of just talking to people and getting to know people. And over the years, I've also noticed, like, what does it take to be successful? I've seen people you know, coming to the industry and do really, really well. And then I've seen people really struggle. And so, I, you know, over the years, I've been paying attention to that and seeing, okay, this is what it takes to be successful. And how can we cultivate that? And how can I support people to be successful? Um, and so when the opportunity came for me to get into recruitment, I just felt like it was uh, just the perfect transition for me because I've always been interested in that aspect of, you know, what makes people successful. And it is now, this is my dream job. <laughs> and the, the, the dream part of it is that I get to help people find their dream jobs. I think for me, that's very important. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of recruiter who will just try to send you anywhere in hopes that, you know, somebody's going to hire you. Um, because I, you know, I do care. I'm a people's person. I care about people. So I, I try to, it's like a big puzzle for me. It's kind of like matchmaking. <laughs> I want to make sure that wherever, you know, I, I try to send you, it will be the right job for you. So I look at more than just what's on your resume. Uh, when we speak, you know, I listen to what you're saying, but also to what you're not saying, what's in between the lines. Um, That's so yeah, amazing. So I, you can tell I really enjoy what yes, I do. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for explaining all that. And OK, so then we're going to go into the disclaimers. The opinions expressed here in this forum and in my newsletter are my own. Nothing to do with the company I've worked for or the groups I associate with. And the same goes for Veronica, correct? And we just say that because we have knowledge that we share and so forth. But it's always a good idea to put that disclaimer up. And also, Veronica, you're limited to jobs within the US. So anybody in UK, Europe, other places, what do they need to do? So the best thing, yeah, so my focus is mainly the US. So I recruit for roles that are um, for people who live in the US. We do have an office in London and Germany. So we do work with, you know, UK and the EU as well. That is a different division. So the best thing to do is either look on Adaptive Globalization website and see what roles are available there, or you can reach out to one of our <laughs> recruiters who are located in our London office. If you're following our LinkedIn page, um, Adaptive Globalization, we're currently doing our employee spotlight. So you can reach out to any of those people who you'll see that, you know, their work in our London office, or you can reach out to me and I'll let you know who's the best person to reach out to. Fantastic. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, great. Uh, so that's that about that. And then the roles you help primarily are LSP side, maybe some buyer, but mostly LSP. Yes. So mainly, yes. My main focus is LSPs. We do work with some corporate clients as well. So there are roles there too, but not as often as roles for LSPs. Okay. Very good. Just, just so everybody knows. And then also your focus is localization roles per se, not so much translator and linguist. Correct. Yes. So most of my roles again are for LSB. So they're not um, freelance, you know, roles for freelancers or vendors. 
Um, however, if you are a freelancer or you're trying to get into the industry, trying to work for an LSP, I do have a few tips for you. So just keep listening. Exactly. <laughs> Great. What's the good word about localization jobs? Mm -hmm. Good question. Yes. And as you've mentioned before, right, everybody's seeing news of mass layoffs. It's all over the you know, all over LinkedIn. Everybody's talking about it. I would say the good thing about the localization industry is that the localization industry has always been very resilient. It's a very resilient industry. So even though you hear of, you know, these layoffs and and people looking for jobs, the localization industry is actually growing and there's a lot of people hiring, um, you know, companies getting funding. There's a lot of companies also getting more into tech side. So there's a lot going on. Um, and as I said, it's, it's again, the this resilience of the localization industry. Um, as you've probably, you know, even during COVID, I know it was very scary in the beginning, but I feel like for a lot of companies in the localization industry, eventually, you know, we all came out stronger out of it too. So if you are in the localization industry, I would say fear not. There are jobs out there, people are hiring. So it's not time to hit the panic button yet. <laughs> Yes, I would say just keep learning. Learning. Things yeah. are changing so quickly in yes. our industry that, and always look for ways to do things better. Just because things are done one way, you know, I mean, automation is a huge thing. And I'm not talking about machine translation. I'm talking about automation in general, right? If there are certain tasks you're doing, like learn, learn as much as you can, but then also look for new solutions. Um, yeah. Just because things are done a certain way doesn't always mean that that's the right way or the most efficient way. So just being proactive and yeah, never stop learning. I know it's, it's such a cliche. It's so true. But it yeah. is so true. And I think more so in our industry too, because yeah. things are constantly changing. There are new yeah. tools, you know, yeah. new, new technology coming out all the time. So I think it's very important. Very important. Absolutely. Up with industry trends. Yes. Very good. And, and also networking and, you know, lo local lunch itself is a great place to go. And thanks Veronica for coming to ours. And what's cool about local lunch, I'll give a little plug. I run local lunch San Diego and what I love about it. There's so many all around the world. And people get to see you in three dimensions. They see, you know, not just there's that resume, but they see you interacting and asking questions and laughing. I mean, come on, you can see a personality and get to, you know, get friends together. I think that's a good thing. So now the scary part, what to do when you get laid off or you voluntarily leave? literally when you get laid off and you turn on the green ring, mm -hmm. let's hear it from you. What's your opinion about yeah. that? Good question. And I think there's so much, um, there, you know, everybody has an opinion about that and you probably <laughs> have seen it all over LinkedIn too. Everybody has an opinion on it. Um, and I think the right question to that is it really depends. There is no right or wrong answer for this. It depends on your personal situation. I, as a recruiter, don't actually see anything wrong with the green ring. I know there are people out there saying, oh, you look desperate. No, I don't think that's the case. And I think also if you do turn on the green ring um, and have been laid off, I think it kind of signals to recruiters that you are actively looking for a job. So if there's a company that you know, needs to hire quickly, really needs to get somebody fast on their team. I think that could be a good thing because with the green ring, you're signaling that, you know, you're act very active in your search and you're looking to find a job fairly quickly too. Um, so it could be a positive. It really, again, it really depends on your situation. Some people don't want to turn it on and that's totally fine. There is another way you can signal to recruiters that you're available um, in your profile. You can turn on the open to work 
-hmm. and that does not show on your profile. That's only something that recruiters can see. So on your profile, you know, your profile looks the same way. Nothing's different. It's just to recruiters, you know, we can see that you marked your profile as open to work. Now that open to work um, signal is also good if, you know, if you're happy at your job, you have a job or not happy. <laughs> if you have a job, you have a job. <laughs> you're thinking, okay, is this the job I want to keep? Yeah. Maybe I should start looking for something else and you're more passive in your search. It's also a good idea to have that on. Um, but not the green ring, but the open not, to work. No, in that and, case, not the green yes. ring. Of course, obviously, yeah. if you're employed, yeah. I would not put the green ring on because you know, your, your company can see that, which yes. might not be a good idea. Um, so again, you know, it's, it's really up to you, up to what you feel comfortable with, but the open to work um, switch, I think it's like right under your picture mm-hmm. in your profile, you can turn it on. That's more private. So, you know, you're not publicly putting the green ring on. Very good. And also that, thank you for all that information. And also the whole visibility thing. I've seen people add on different things that they do with the intention of, hey, this is a bunch of things I do, but it shows up as a job and it sends out a thing. And unless you have the settings set to private or whatever, don't, don't announce. If you didn't know it, you'll send out something and then all of your LinkedIn network sees that so-and-so got a new job and that can be disturbing, inconvenient, or really bad if you already have a job. So I think there's just being a cognizant of how you deal with that and do look into the settings. Thanks. That's a big, those are big tips. Yes. Now, another thing too, if, you know, if you've been laid off, I think LinkedIn is an excellent tool and platform to use um, in your job search, you know, posting, Um, just speaking about a topic that you're interested in or know a lot about. So I know, you know, a lot of people might be thinking, well, I'm not that experienced. I don't really know that much about localization. There's probably plenty more people who know a lot more than me. I have nothing to write about. Um, And again, I would say post anyway, because there definitely are people who may find your information useful. You could also write things from your own perspective. So that's always very helpful. Or just talk about, you know, issues that people in the localization industry can relate to. You know, you can start a newsletter, just be more active. I know there's this whole thing of personal branding on LinkedIn. I'm sure you've seen it all over LinkedIn too, but I think it's very important. And if you are unfortunately laid off and are looking for a new job, I think it can be very helpful. Of course, one thing I would not do is getting to, you know, arguments. Yes. In common section on different posts, please definitely don't do that. Um, but, you know, posting about what, you know, you know, if you're a project manager, talk about, I don't know, the TMS or Mm -hmm. the issues you, you encountered with certain projects and how you solve those issues, something like that. Just being active and sharing your knowledge, um, I think can be very helpful, especially, you know, if, if your potential employer sees that you have this knowledge already too. And then what you and I have said before, don't base your job search on fear. Very true. Yes. Let me, let me elaborate on that a little bit. Yes. So definitely. And, you know, some people may say, okay, dream job, you know, not everybody is lucky enough to get a dream job or I don't want a dream job. I just want a job and all that is fine. Um, I think that's, you know, that's the idea behind knowing what you need and knowing what you want and knowing what you would be happy with to some extent, knowing what you can do and where you can apply those skills. So it does take some, you know, look internally and, and just analyze what that is. Also, you know, if, if you do have a certain job in mind, but don't have the skills, identify where you can fill that gap in your skills, um, you know, what you need to get to that next step. So sometimes 
you know, a good thing to do, especially if you're very new to the industry, if, you know, if, if you're trying to get into the industry or you're very young or you're just starting out, um, you know, if you do have a job in mind, again, LinkedIn is an amazing tool. Look at people's profiles who have the job that you, you will want. Look at what they're saying about their job. Look at the skills they list and go from there, you know, and see, okay, so they have, they do this and this and this. I know how to do this one thing, but then these three other things, I have no idea how to do them. I would have to gain this experience or learn it. You know, there's so many wonderful resources in our industry too, um, where you can learn certain skills. So just understanding where you want to go and the skills that you need to improve on um, is definitely going to help you a lot too. So, and yes, you know, again, it, it can be very scary looking for a job, but panicking and applying anywhere into any job is not a good strategy. Um, you know, applying to hundreds of jobs and hope something sticks. It may work, but most of the time it really doesn't. So make sure that when you do apply to jobs, you have at least, you know, around 80% of the skills that are required for that job. For that. So, yeah, interesting. Okay. So, so we've been talking about, you know, getting ready for all this, uh, your LinkedIn profile, you know, your job description. Oh my gosh, you put so many notes here, Veronica. It'd take <laughs> us an hour to talk about it. But what's really interesting is putting in keywords. And we could go into a formal, what's the deal to really dial it in in the process. But you realize you look at a job description and you've got to be, um, there's a matching exercise and you've got to be truthful, but are you going to be 100%? nobody's 100%. And we're going to talk about percentages a little bit later. But the thing I want to say is when you do this thing in your profile, you want to make it easy for the recruiter to connect with you, put the email address in there, you want to put that highlighting your strengths in the uh, description. And people like me, I'm, I guess I call myself multi career years, multi creative, and kind of pulling it all together. So I have a lot of stuff and I have a lot of creative initiatives going on now. So my LinkedIn profile has a lot of stuff on it. Is that something bad or something that takes away from somebody looking at my profile going, holy cow, what's going on here? Or do they go, oh my gosh, there's so many things you can do. What's your take mm -hmm. on that? Again, it depends, right? It depends on what you're looking for and what you have in your profile. So definitely, you know, if you have, if you have many different skills, I'd say, put it all out there. Um, I wouldn't limit, you know, especially if you're a little more advanced in your career, you have multiple years of experience. It's more likely that you've done more than just one thing. So don't, you know, pigeonhole yourself to just one type of work. So if you have experience doing multiple things like marketing and project management yep. and, and sales, yep. put it all out yep. there. Nice. Because that way, you know, you open up yourself for more than just one opportunity. Yes. If you just focus on, you know, let's say just project management, but you also have marketing and sales experience, mm -hmm. then you will only limit yourself mm -hmm. to being considered for, you know, the, the project manager um, roles because nobody knows that you have all these other mm -hmm. skills, right? It really depends. I would say, however, if you are, again, if you are new to the industry or you're just starting out, obviously, you know, I would just limit it to the job that you're actually applying for. So if you're, let's say, uh, a project coordinator or a junior project manager, then focus on that and all the skills and all the things that you do as a junior project manager or project coordinator, um, you know, don't put too much there. Um, also, one thing I would like to point out as well is, you know, some people just list job titles. And unfortunately, in the localization industry, <laughs> a job title at one company does not necessarily mean that it's the same thing at another company. Um, companies in our industry like to be very creative with job titles sometimes. 
um, you know, an account manager at one company can actually be a project manager. So it can, you know, it's, it's really hard going by job titles. So it's always really important to put a little description on your profile about what you do. Um, you know, just highlight a few things, what you do day to day or, or some key achievements. Um, because again, the, the job title is not going to be able to tell you know, the recruiter or hiring manager. And yes, we're talking about LinkedIn only, but, you know, we're talking about LinkedIn because it's one of the biggest tools that recruiters use um, to, to, you know, connect with candidates. To so find if I, you. Yes, yeah. so if I look at your profile and I only see job titles, it's very hard for me to determine whether or not you would be suited for this, for the roles that I'm working on. So I might not reach out. So it's always yeah. good to just have a little bit of description there. Nice. Um, so use the summary, you know, use it to tell, <laughs> tell, tell your story. Yourself. What are tell you, your story. you know? Yeah. yeah. What, what are your career aspirations? Yeah. And then yeah. um, highlight your achievements. I think that's yeah. very important. And then use keywords. Yes. Look at job, job description, you know, look at, you know, job descriptions for the roles that you're looking for and see yeah. what kind of keywords they're using there and then use them in your profile. Um, Cause LinkedIn, you know, it's, it's, we go by keywords yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so and if you don't have them in there again, yeah. we might miss you. So. Exactly. It's about visibility and, and we won't go into it now, but there's a lot of ways you can determine if you're using enough, you could use a tag cloud generator yeah. and all that. Um, I think if you do a, just a quick search on LinkedIn itself, there's courses about preparing your LinkedIn and, and that kind of thing. So you mm -hmm. can get information and we'll probably talk about that in an upcoming session. So we have a few more things to get through. And one thing that just came to my mind, Veronica, we didn't talk about. When I see people reactive posting after a layout layoff and what I see that doesn't seem to be helpful, they'll go, hey, network, I've been laid off, green ring. Let me know if you see something for me. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. I don't, I know the person, but I don't know what they need. I could look at their description, but wouldn't you say when you do put the green ring or putting any kind of signal and you're asking your network to help, which is a cool thing, you can get help. Wouldn't it be good to say specifically, I'm looking for this kind of role? Mm -hmm. Would you yes, think? I agree. Well, it, it, again, all of my answers are it depends because yes. not every situation is the same and not That's every right. person, you know, is in the same situation. So <laughs> you hear me saying it depends a yes. lot. Yes. Um, but again, yes, you are right that if, if you do make that post, it's good to be a little more specific about what you're looking for. Um, but then again, at the same time, if you do make a post like that, it could be helpful because, you know, you don't know who's in your network and who can connect you with who. So it's true. Yeah. I think that's again, but it depends on your own network. Right. So a, a really important thing to do as well is grow your network and nurture your network. Um, so that's that's the same thing. It's also related to, you know, working with a recruiter as well. You know, some people might just send a message to a recruiter thinking, oh, hey, you're a recruiter. Can you help with no, you know, information about the roles exactly. they're looking for? So it's yeah. kind of a similar yeah. thing. And so, yeah. you know, reaching out yeah. to recruiters is great. Yeah. But if, if we don't know you, like if I don't have a personal or prior relationship with you, mm -hmm. Sure, I'll help, but you gotta tell you gotta give me more. Yeah, right? You gotta exactly. tell me what you're yeah. looking for. Yeah. Um, so so yeah, it's always good when you're reaching out. So th there are two different ways you can reach out to a recruiter, right? We we post jobs, the roles that we're recruiting for, you can see them, you know, you can find my jobs on LinkedIn or on, on our website. So you can apply to those jobs that way and send your resume, or you can, you know, you can message a recruiter and say, Hey, I see you're recruiting in the industry I'm interested in. I'm looking for this type of role in this type of location. I have this many years of experience doing this thing. Um, 
do you have any, you know, roles open or, you know, are you able to help? Um, that's probably the best, like first approach. And then, you know, attach your resume if you have yep. one available. Exactly. Um, of course, if you, you know, just a disclaimer, if you do message me and tell me, Hey, I'm looking for a job, can you help? And with nothing else, I'm still going to go click and look at your LinkedIn profile to see, okay, who is this person and what do they do? Um, but it's always, you know, to save everybody's time, yeah, uh, to, to just come prepared and know yeah. what you want and know That's the, the deal. roles you want. So the recruiter can present you to the companies, right? And the misunderstanding, Veronica, you've said that you don't go out and search for the job. You, how does that work? Yes. So when you're working with a recruiter, yes, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding um, when, you know, people think that, okay, just because I'm a recruiter, I can go out there and find you a job. Um, while there is, yes, <laughs> I can do that, but it, it's, I don't go out there looking for jobs for you. Um, you know, we have certain roles that we're filling. Um, so it's more of a, you know, I'm, I'm working on this puzzle of finding the right people for the roles that I'm working on. However, at the same time, as a recruiter, I have, you know, a better view of the industry and who's hiring or who's planning to hire and when. So working with a recruiter does have advantages that even though I may not have roles that are a good match for you right now, um, you know, we do have working relationship with companies in the industry. We know when, you know, they're hiring or when they're planning to hire or who might be interested in your profile. So um, that's a way we can help too. However, again, we don't go, you know, don't send me a resume and expect me to go find a role for you that's not you know it, yeah. it, it's not exactly how that works well and it's good to talk about it because a lot of people don't know how that works all right so all really good things to to mention mm -hmm. okay so go ahead and put your questions in the chat oh and there's already some things in here nice okay oh and then there's a note from a recruiter that yeah, when other recruiters ghost after engaging, well, that's not a good thing too. When you're onboarding and they stop replying, that's not good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so good for you recruiter, striving to be encouraged pos positivity, quick communication and transparency. And, you know, and there's all kinds of people out there doing talent acquisition and, you know, some things aren't quite for whatever reasons we don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another note, um, someone in Brazil uh, that, yeah, they're different. They're different. And then when American recruiters see, and that's the thing too, international, it's going to be a little bit different. So we do want to be clear that there's going to be difference in the different countries versus U.S. So mm -hmm. we, I, I hope everything we've talked about can apply to some degree, uh, but some of it's just going to be by virtue uh, of that. Did, did you have anything to say about that, Veronica, for those? Um, other yes. And I've seen Francine is asking about recruiters in Canada. I'm not sure oh. if you're looking for roles in Canada. I know the Canadian localization industry is a little different, um, but we do work with few companies in that market as well. So Francine, if you want to learn more, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to... <laughs> I'm happy to chat. Um, yeah. yeah, and 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 uh, Jessica in Brazil was saying that. Oh, it's like dating. It is. It's almost like. Uh, or what did you say? You're uh, fixing people up for jobs. It is. So it yeah. is. It's like matchmaking. And unfortunately, I think they're re referring to ghosting. And I know ghosting is yet another you know term that is all all all, all over the internet there. And you know. It does unfortunately happen, you know, um, everyone gets busy. And so sometimes it happens unintentionally. Um, but yes, it's not right when recruiters ghost. Sometimes, you know, what some people may consider ghosting is, you know, the recruiter may not be getting back to you is because they also have no update from the client. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, there's a difference between internal and external 
recruiters as well, right? So I, Adaptive, we're external recruiters, so we're not part of the company. So sometimes there's a little time lag between updates. And so we may not be really ghosting, we're just waiting for updates. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I know when you're looking for a job, right, especially if, if you've been laid off, everything might seem like it's taking too long uh, if you're on that side of things. I mean, I've, I've been on that side too. So it may feel that way, that things are not moving fast enough. Um, and you might feel that you're being ghosted. It's not always, you know, it's not always the case. Yeah. So just patience. And you know what, if you do feel like you're being ghosted, reach out. You know, there's yes. nothing wrong with following up because yes. we all get busy. Exactly. <laughs> we all, you know, exactly. we all have a million things to do every day. So uh, maybe we just didn't get to get to it yet. So yes, send that reminder. I Absolutely. don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you're being ghosted after that as well, well, then yeah, that's really not good. Yeah, no. and it does happen, you know, and Jesse was just saying, uh, could be going up the chain of command, you know, blah, 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 talking. It's part of the the, the whole process of, of working with the person and it could be, oh, yeah, give constructive negative feedback. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Give, and there's always opportunity for improvement. That's true. Dol- Dolores, thank you. What's your recommendation for people applying from other markets who live in Argentina and Latin America? Again, mm-hmm. that's that off out of country. Different. Yes. So again, I work with US, you know, companies with US offices. However, there are companies who also um, they have offices in other countries as well and may be looking for people in Argentina or Latin America. So again, it's there are companies like that. So again, your best chance would be to speak with a recruiter who knows the market a little more, who knows who these companies are, and they can, you know, point you in the right direction. Um, We do, we have this year worked on some roles in, um, in other countries, like Mm. in Latin America. So there, those, they do exist. Okay. (laughs) Those roles are out there. Again, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Yeah. Um, It may not be the roles that you're looking for. So again, sorry, it's my, it depends. And that's good. (laughs) Absolutely. And and we need to talk in those terms because we can't say everything's black and white. And especially, you know, we don't want to have 100% promises and all that because everything is so conditional. Uh, So yeah, thanks. And now I see a comment from uh, Zanur. No, good question. And so here are two it de- well, it depends. Is is the master's degree? Oh, master's in localization. Okay, got it. Well, again, it depends on where you are in your career, right? If you're just starting out and you have no prior experience, then yes, uh, a master's degree in localization is a good, you know, will benefit you. It, it will open up doors. Yeah, exactly. However, if you, you know, if, if you've been a project manager for a few years, but don't have a master's degree in localization, they're kind of the, you know, it, it's almost the same thing. So just because somebody else has a master's degree doesn't necessarily mean that they're a better candidate. So, and as with any education, I think it all comes down to your experience and what you can do. Obviously, yeah. yes, as I said, yeah. if you're starting out, it's a little different, yeah. you know, so I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. And also internships, you know, yes. if you are just starting out, Consider internships. A lot of companies um, offer internship programs for people who, you know, are still students or, or are new to, in, to the industry. They are available. And, you know, again, if you are fairly new and you, you don't have a degree in localization or, you know, you're a freelancer but are more interested in getting a corporate role, consider, you know, QA testing roles or linguistic testing roles too. Those are also a ways of, you know, getting, getting your foot into the, into the door and into a corporate role. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Good point. One more thing Jesse said, 
recruiters won't search for job, blah, 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 blah. What if positions aren't posted? He's talking about the hidden job market. Can you talk okay. for a few seconds on yes. that? Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. So, and is this from Jesse? Jesse, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yes. So, um, that's a really good question. Um, so, as I said, as a recruiter, you know, I, I, <laughs> I post my jobs on LinkedIn, but again, depending on how busy I get, I also don't always post all of my jobs on LinkedIn. Sometimes I don't get to it. So, you know, they're not always there. So getting in, you know, tapping into the hidden hidden market too. Um, and my answer to that would be just connect with the recruiter and talk to them. See, you know, every time I talk to any candidate, whether I already know them like Marina or, you know, um, whether I have never heard of them before, I always, you know, schedule a call and we talk about what that person is looking for. All right. Where are you right now? What are you looking for? What are your skills? Especially if they're not applying to any specific jobs. Um, That gives me an idea of, okay, what is out there? Where can I match them? What are the companies that I have a relationship with that I can, you know, I can send them to who would be interested in a profile like that? So I don't know if that answers your question, but um, again, I would say reach out to recruiters yeah, and, and, and see, chat with them. Yes. And again, not sure. all recruiters are the same, right? Exactly. I'm only speaking from my own experience and how I handle things. Another recruiter might handle things very differently. So I just wanted to put it out there. You know, we all work in a different way. Exactly. Okay. Well, I love the way you work. (laughs) I just do. Mm -hmm. All right, Veronica, thank you so much. And Veronica can be found at Adaptive Globalization on LinkedIn. And I'm on LinkedIn too. I can, you know, feel free to reach out, connect with me. I usually accept almost all of my connection requests. So fantastic. You are so awesome. All right, everybody have an awesome weekend. And it's great to have you with us today. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye.